Hello YouTube, Colin, MM0OPX here. Um, just uh, showing you some of the main components of the Adjusted Wave Antenna. Some people have been asking to see see the components, so so I thought I would show you the, the main components. So this is the what you're looking at here is the, the Mark III Adjusted Wave. Um, and this is the this is effectively the model I'm going to work with. I'm going to make another couple of these up. I've got about another enough components to make about another five of these antennas up. So I'm going to make a couple up for myself and some uh, for some buddies of mine. So we'll look at some of the components. So I guess the main component and the hardest component to source is the reel. Uh, this reel is just a simple fly fishing reel, but the problem is is trying to source these at a reasonable price. Um, I won't tell you where I get this from, um, but please, please look hard and you'll, you'll maybe find some. These won't last forever. Um, these are on special at the minute and I get them very, very cheap. Um, but I've got a funny feeling that within a couple of months they're going to be sold out here. Um, so if you can make, the, if you can find the reels or you could perhaps make, make reels on a, on a lathe, then, then, then the project's basically a gore. So you need four of those. Um... For the top clamp, so this mounts onto the top of the 12 meter spider beam pole. So these are standard tube clamps. You can get these from any hydraulic, any hydraulic or pneumatic merchants. Um, these are RSB pipe clamps here. This this is a 12 mil. These are 8 mil, um, and this is a nylon 66 plate from a bit uh, that I had lying around here. Um, so so you have to go into that. You have two fiberglass rods and you have a couple of mini pulleys. So I can't quite zoom out there, but you get two of these to go on each side that go to the top of the, your, um, your pole that you're going to be using. Um, uh, the enclosure itself is just a PVC enclosure here, IP56, but obviously as soon as you drill the holes you're going to lose that. So this is one that I've pre-drilled, I now have a template there, I have all the sizes marked so I can I can drill these quite easy. So this is the lid, as you can see, the lid, and that's the body, if you look at the body, you can see that's the same holes there. And on the back there's just one hole on the back there. So that's the, that's the box, and they're quite secure. They're quite um, strong, uh, once they're screwed together, quite good. Um, the clamps, that we use, the I call these the bottom clamps. So these are 52mm clamps, again, standard standard, um, standard hydraulic pipe clamps. So you can, you can see there, 52 on there, yep, 52. 52, so you need four of those, two for the top, two for the bottom. And again, you need to make couple of plates so you can mount them to your box. See these two plates one and two. Again this is nylon 66 and these are bolted to the enclosure. Now the way that I've designed these, I've designed this for I think these are class six clamps. I've also they can also work with class five clamps. Now if you have a smaller pole, perhaps aluminium eh, or fiberglass, whatever you're using, these clamps can also mount on here. There's an extra set of drill holes here, so all you do is move the position of this same um, stud. This one stays the same on the end there, and you can use different size. So I think there's a good variation here from about phew, 35 millimeters up to about 60 millimeters. So depending on the size of pole that you're using there. Um, again, more pipe clamps used. So this 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 goes in here, the third the third eight millimeter uh, fiberglass pole. So this is for your return reel, uh, this one, your return reel, um, again, very, very simple. Um, if we look inside, so inside we have here, we have a very high quality um, chassis uh, connector there. So this, and this is gold plated contacts as well, so these are very, very good. They're not cheap in comparison to the rest of the, the the uh, the kit it's it's probably one of the more expensive parts of it but they do make life a lot, a lot easier but you could just use a standard standard chassis mount if you really want to but I like to make my make life a little bit easier here um, we have a choke ballon inside here so this is a FT two forty forty three there um, I think there's ten or eleven turns there so this is this is special coax so this is not standard RG fifty eight 
Uh, this is DXW142FEP, so this is this is probably will handle the 20% less of power than standard uh, uh, RG142, but this will easily handle oh kilowatt plus couple of kilowatts, so uh, no problem at all there from a power handling point of view. The core itself, I believe that will handle kilowatt, kilowatt and a half something, something in that region there. But of course, with this antenna, we're always running it at a, a good match there because you can adjust the antenna. But there's not a big mismatch there, so that should uh, that should help things. And um, we've got a little strap here going from the braid uh, for the radio, uh, and everything is actually coated in a, a special rubber a rubber uh, compound there to seal everything. So everything is water sealed. You can see that there. There's a couple of coats on there. So it's very very simple. Um, I'll go back to the top mount there. Again, nylon 66 that we used. Again, the C1 is because this is actually a class one. So my Mark One prototype used an old fiberglass pole and the top, the, the, the diameter at the top of the pole was eight millimeters. And because that's down a class, I had to have a different pitch of holes there. Um, so that's the holes. And I actually use a little template. I don't have it here, but I basically modeled this in 3D modeling software. Uh, and I print, and I basically printed the, uh, plan view, looking down uh, like this, and basically I printed it out in one to one, made a template, printed it out, stuck a bit of paper onto this, and I drilled the holes, so the hole positions are pretty good. And these are actually tapped M6, you can see that. Those tapped M6. Um, all fittings, uh, absolutely everything is stainless steel. Uh, I've not used plated steel for anything there, I've tried to use the best of components that I could find there. Of all the uh, wing nuts, absolutely everything. Everything basically apart from the the, the SO239 connector is uh, the stainless steel. Um, if we look at the antenna wire, so the antenna wire of choice is uh, stainless steel, one, one, one millimeter, seven by seven. And this one's already been pre-measured, so we do see all these marks. This is the marks for the bands. So three, three blue, we can have a look at three blue. Three blue is 20 meters. Um, so this is the wire that we're currently using, and you need two of these. I measure two 25 meter lengths, they're both identical, one to the radiator and one to the radio. Um, this is the wire that I used um, for the Mark II. And this is tin copper with the Kevlar core, but it is very, very expensive. It's about, um, about a pound a meter, uh, and I don't have the... The sample that has the that has the, the PVC coating on it, or the plastic coating, the green plastic coating, but you need to strip that off, and it's very very difficult. You put it in a wire stripper, and because the wall thickness uh, of the plastic coating is not too uh, consistent, sometimes the uh, the blade can nick uh, this copper wire, so it's it's not ideal to strip it off, but it does work very very well. It's slightly bigger diameter; it's somewhere in the region of 1.6 millimeter. And does work very well. So I still have this wire on the uh, Mark II uh, Adjusty Wave, um, which is my first video I made. So almost identical, but using a slightly different reel. I already had a bigger enclosure, but the, the ballon design, everything is just the same there. Um, so I think that's all the main components there. Um, so if you can find the reels, then I think you're good to go. But that's the most difficult thing, is actually finding suitable reels and suitable reels at a decent price. But again, um, if you know someone with a lathe, someone in a machine shop, there's no reason why you couldn't get them to make up a, a custom design that would be a bit better. Um, and also, <clears throat> you need a reel that's big enough to handle your, uh, your antenna wire. Um, because if you take wire that's too big, then it just won't fit on the reel there. Um, so here's a, a reel that's off. Um, so this just shows you how it connects to the spindle, each spindle. Um, and this this uh, this is fishing braid. So you can buy this any fishing store online, and it's very very inexpensive. Again, twenty five meters of that. Um, so we'll just go around the unit to show you how the connections are made. But it's very very simple, and um, but it works, and that's the main thing. So, if you've liked this video, give it a little thumbs up, give it a little share, and uh, spread the word. Bye for now.